We're in the colonial city of Antigua, Guatemala to celebrate the wedding of our good friends, Ashley and Wilson. Antigua is filled with ruins, living traces of colonial Spanish culture, as well as delicious food, crafted cocktails, unique places to stay, active volcanoes, and is home to some of the best coffee in the world. Today, we'll visit a local coffee farmer to learn about the coffee process and even get our hands a little dirty. We have a really exciting day planned here in Antigua. We're going on a coffee tour. It's one of the few things I definitely wanted to do while I was here. Coffee actually was one of the reasons why this became a flourishing city again after the earthquake. Um, they started producing coffee back in the mid 1800s and because of the perfect weather and the high elevation and also the volcanic ash, it makes it a really great place to grow coffee beans. And Mars, as you can see, Loves himself. Get started. Loves himself some coffee. Mm -hmm. But our friends um, and the wedding party are going to, or I think a lot of people are going to check out this coffee farm. Yeah. So, so we have a really fun, busy cool day, day planned celebrating Ashley and Wilson and checking out some cool spots in Antigua. We did our tour through the company De La Gente. They took us through the coffee process from bean to brew. First, we walked a short distance to the local coffee farmer's field from his home. We got to learn firsthand what goes into growing coffee. On this particular farm, three types of Arabica coffee are grown. Bourbon, Katuai, and Katura. Gotta pick the red the red berries. If it's orange or yellow or green, one green one can ruin like 50 berries. So you have to find a totally red berry and harvest begins in December and it's December 2nd so there should be some good berries on this here tree. Oh look, here's some good ones. These are nice and red. Is this a competition? Are they going to see who has the most red berries? Because I want to win. This coffee farm, they also plant other trees like lemons or oranges and it helps to provide shade for the coffee beans. So it also provides shade for the coffee pickers. <laughs> a coffee tree will produce for 15 to 20 years before fading out of food production. It takes a coffee tree about two years to produce its first bean and four years before there is a full harvest. From the field, we head back to the farmer's home to remove the beans from the cherries. What's left is a slimy little bean. The beans will be left to dry out, which usually takes about one to two weeks. Thankfully, this part of the process was done before we arrived. The next step is to roast the beans. We all get to take a turn. <laughs> After that, it's time to grind the beans. We grind them on a volcanic stone. Last, the ground coffee is brewed and ready to enjoy. De La Gente Tours takes out the middleman and helps to bring more income to local coffee growers and their families, which is desperately needed. So, if you come to Guatemala, consider learning from a small-scale producer and creating a memory you won't soon forget. 